Good morning. morning. And welcome to not outdoor worship. (laughs) But if you feel the need to go outside during part of the service, you certainly can stand for the tickets. But uh, we're thankful for rain, of course. Uh, But uh, stay tuned. We would love to reschedule our worship in the park. So watch the midweek and Facebook and other forms of communication. And if that is the case, we will inform you of that. Uh, in our hospital report this week, Jan Banger will be going to Rochester early this week for some tests, so uh, please remember her in prayer, and we continue to remember some others um, in our prayer time later in the service as well. It was Kay Albers' birthday on June 1st. Um, they are no longer in town here, but if you uh, have her mailing address or can contact her in some other way, wish her a happy birthday. And it is birthday week in the Clausen household. Darlene Clausen is today, June 2nd and Lawrence Clausen is the sixth. We do have Day Camp VBS coming up next week. Um, We will meet with our Day Camp counselors from Ingamokaboji Lutheran Bible Camp on Sunday evening with our local staff uh, to get started, and then students will come Monday through Thursday, the 10th through the 13th. We are still in need of some helpers, especially some adults. You don't have to be here every day, but we need some adult group leaders to be moving around with kids through the different rotations. So please let us know if you're available to help with that and some other needs as well. Uh, Check out that green sheet that was in the midweek, and you can fill it out. Our New Orleans participants are here today to lead us in worship and uh, share a little bit about what we're going to experience at the gathering itself. So if I can have all the gathering participants come up, even adults, uh, we're going to let them introduce themselves to you so you have a face with a name. So when you come up, and uh, I don't care who starts, but tell us your name and where you're from, because we're not all from here in Holstein immediately. And uh, your magic question that I'm going to answer is, when I have free time, I love to... When I have free time, I like to help out with my grandpa. Uh, my name is Drew Berg. I live in Holstein, and my free time, I like to go. I'm Landon Peterson. I live outside of Galva and in my free time I like to play sports. I'm uh, Kyle Bird. I live in Holstein and in my free time I like to go fishing. Uh, good morning. My name is Brody Bicinius. I live here in town. And in my free time, I'm kind of weird. I like to run. I'm Cecily Jacobson. I live in Battle Creek, and in my free time, I like to do different types of art. Uh, I'm Billy Oxnail. I live in Arthur. In my free time, I like to read. Crystal Peterson. I'm Landon's mom. We live outside Galva. In my free time, I like to enjoy a hot bath. Craig Peterson, I like to uh, take our kids to all their different activities. <laughs> I'm Chris Kistemacher. I live very close next door in town. In my free time right now, I would love to get my garden planted. <laughs> <laughs> we keep saying it's not Father's Day yet. Um, I'm Jim Kistenmacher, and I live next door as well. In my free time, I love to wash a car. It hasn't happened in a while. Um, So we are going to be serving brunch after the worship service. We'll have our table prayer upstairs here. Uh, We have lots of breakfast burritos down there, so please stay and call all your friends to come join you for lunch. Um, But uh, that's one of our fundraisers going into the gathering, which will be in mid-July. I believe we leave the 15th on a flight. Um, And also on June 14th, Friday night of Kinderfest, we are going to have a food stand probably somewhere between here um, and the downtown area. Um, You might get a little New Orleans flair. We're trying that out today uh, to see if we can do that in bulk. So uh, please support us as you can on those two ventures, as well as anything else that might turn up between now and the middle of July. Um, We are pretty set financially to go, but we're working on uh, having some food money for us and just some incidentals. So uh, thank you for participating in that today. In addition to burritos, we also have yogurt, fruit, granola, so burritos wasn't high on your list. There are other things. <laughs> All right. We come to worship 
God, in the name of the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather as the people of God, called by the gospel of Jesus Christ, to a life of witness and service. We are the people of God in this world. We are the Church of Christ on earth. We are a people moved by the Holy Spirit to build a world of light and hope. We do not respond. Forgive our lack of courage and commitment. We hear you saying to us, be full of love for others, following the example of Christ who loved you, but even find it difficult to love ourselves. Today we confess that we are not worthy of your love and ask you to forgive the sin of every area of our life. Give us new sensitivity to the larger world around us. Open our ears to the Our God is a great God and has forgiven our sin to set us free. Out of God's great love for us, Jesus died on the cross and rose on the third day, so the gap between us and God could be closed. Out of great love for us, God provides for our every need in daily life. Out of great love for us, God gives us the power to respond to the needs of those around us by giving us a new desire to serve. Out of great love for us, our sin is forgiven. We are free. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, throughout time you freely oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, by your power, for us to wholeness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation, please respond with the text in the bold print. This is Psalm 139, 1 through 14. 
O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from from far away. You search out my path and I lie down. And are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in soul, you are there. If I say surely, the darkness shall overcome, shall cover me, and night wraps itself around me. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day. For darkness is light to you. Children, come on up for a message. you that if you had to tell someone about the love of God, what would you say? He loves you no matter what. Yep. Is that a verse in the Bible? It should be, I think. And there are lots of verses that tell us that, right? Yeah, he loves us very much. Well, if we had to pick out a Bible verse and if we could pick out one that we knew was in the Bible that would tell everyone about God's love for them, where would we have to go? There's just a few choices, right? <laughs> would it be hard to choose? Yes, it would. But in last week's gospel reading, we have that one verse that we sort of say is the gospel in a nutshell. Have you ever heard that expression before? It's like if you have a really long story to tell somebody, you might go, well, in a nutshell, and then you give them a shortened version of it. So this one verse of the Bible is a good gospel in a nutshell to explain what God has done for us and how much he loves us. So it's John 3.16. Do any of you know that one by memory? It might sound familiar. And if anybody out there knows it, you can join me. It says... For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Does that sound like a good summary of everything that God wants to know about his love for us? Right. Yeah. And it's a lot easier than going to the Bible, because how many testaments are there? the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? So there's two Testaments, right? And then you have 66 books in the Bible, like Genesis, Exodus, or Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There's 66 books. There are 1,189 chapters and 31,173 verses. So for you to pick one, that's kind of tough, right? But John 3.16 is a good one. If you don't know what to say to someone about God's love for them, that's one that you can choose to pick. So let's say that again, ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. How many of you are coming to Bible school next week? Today camp? I think maybe most of you. 
And you're going to learn, maybe not that verse, that's not one of our theme verses for the week, but you're going to learn a lot more about God's love for you. And also, we're going to kind of be challenged to go out and tell others about that too. So you might be bringing a friend to day camp. That's great because that's one way that you can share God's love with somebody else is to invite them to come and be part of that experience with you. But remember John 3.16. It's a good one to go to if you need to tell someone about God's love. Let's fold our hands and pray. God, we thank you for your love for us, especially shown in giving Jesus your son to die on the cross to save us from our sins so that we can spend eternity with you in heaven. Amen. Thanks for coming up today. <coughs>
if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. When the world tells us if we are afraid, we should stop. God surrounds us with courage to go. God knows our fears, doubts, and weaknesses, and supplies us with what all we need to live fully and boldly. God knows the power of vulnerability and wants us to risk for the sake of the gospel, created to love one another. God protects us with community and calls us to live in the strength of connection. We are created to be authentic, to be our whole self and know that we are loved by our creator. Matthew 5, chapters 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise God. God invites us to be true to who we are created to be. Christ has called us not just as we are, but because of who we are. God's creativity knows no bounds, and variety is a mark of the kingdom on earth. God delights in bringing his children together in all our uniquenesses and uses of our talents, gifts, and diversities in spreading the good news to all the world. We have been created in the image of love, truth, and joy to be witnesses of God's love to others. to be free, free to be transformed by the gospel. Paul writes in Romans 12 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And in this letter of, to the Galatians in chapter five, he writes, for freedom Christ has set us up free. Stand firm, therefore do not submit again 
to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to, be, to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. To be free in Christ is to be transformed by the love that has been extended to us through the gift of grace. Martin Luther said this about freedom in Christ. Quote, a Christian is Lord of all, completely free of everything. A Christian is a servant, completely attentive to needs of all. It is the very nature of love to be attentive to others and to serve the one who is loved. End quote. Since the beginning of time, humanity has desired and cried out for freedom because without freedom, we are constrained to be what others expect. Yet the freedom of Christ is transformative, calling us to be who we are at our core, beloved children of God, free to love and be loved, to serve and be served. We are created to be free, to work for justice for all our siblings. We are created to be disruptive. Hear about Jesus being disruptive in Matthew 21, verses 12 through 17 from the Message Translation. Jesus went straight to the temple and threw out everyone who had set up shop, buying and selling. He kicked over the tables of loan sharks and the stalls of dove merchants. He quoted this text, My house was designated a house of prayer. You have made it a hangout for thieves. Now there was room for the blind and crippled to get in. They came to Jesus and he healed them. When the religious leaders saw the outrageous things he was doing and heard all the children running and shouting through the temple, Hosanna to David's son, they were up in arms and took him to task. Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus said, Yes, I hear them. And haven't you read in God's word, from the mouths of children and babies, I'll furnish a place of praise. Fed up, Jesus spun around and left the city for Bethany, where he spent the night. And in today's Gospel from Mark, again, he entered the synagogue, and a man there who had a withered hand. They were watching him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. God knows there are still tables to be overturned, hardened hearts to be softened and changed in this world. We see and hear of injustice daily. God gives us discomfort to spur us into holy action. God gives us freedom in Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to be confidently disruptive. The church throughout history has been a place of change. We are called to be the change makers. Hope for the hopeless.
We are created to be disciples, to be sent into the world to love our neighbor, just as we are loved by God. A reading from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. As disciples, we are called to be witnesses of God's love in both words and actions. The Bethlehem Lutheran Church in New Orleans is a historic church that started in 1884. The congregation is known for many things, including its music and the work it does in, with, and for the community. At a time when segregation was the order of the day, it offered a school for people of African descent as their schools were defunded. Bethlehem Lutheran Church lost half of its membership after Hurricane Katrina, yet it currently feeds over 200 neighbors twice a week. The feeding, known as the community table, is one way this community lives out its discipleship. As followers of Christ, we have been equipped with the knowledge of God and the word of God. We have been created to be disciples, sent into the world as a blessing to love our neighbors. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you call us to follow you whenever you lead. We know we do not always follow without question if we follow at all. Help us to listen for your call and to prepare for action. Stir your spirit inside us that we might long to follow you and that people will recognize us as your disciples by the love we share. We pray this in the name of the one who is love, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. statement of faith. We believe in one God, the most high, who is in all things, who is intimate in passion, who is always present. We believe in God of us, the truth of God, who created all things seen and unseen. We believe in God among us, the word of God, Emmanuel, who was born as Jesus, son of the Virgin Mary, who was revealed as the Christ who suffered and Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried, who on the third day rose again and ascended to heaven, 
I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. You may be seated. We should mention we have one more person who is going with us to the gathering. That's Haley Bender from Battle Creek. What would she do in her free time? Put you on the spot. Anything that's not her sister's wedding, which is where she was yesterday. So she's probably been busy with that. And we gave her some grace and mercy for this morning. Uh, so she will be going with us as well. And Noah Shepard. And Noah Shepard, great. Right. I didn't count correctly. Royal Shaler. Yeah. Noah would be fixing a tractor in his yes. spare time. Children, you may bring forward your offering if you have one with you today. All we have, all we are, and all we hope to belong, belongs to you, God. We offer our gifts for use in your service. May they be used to further the work of your church on earth. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Guide your church to expressions of faith that bring rest and release. Teach your faithful people to be attentive to the spiritual, physical, and societal weariness of our neighbors, that we proclaim your grace through tangible acts of mercy and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us mindful of the rhythms of nature as the days lengthen and the seasons shift towards summer. Grant relief to areas facing flooding, and bring favorable weather for the flourishing of crops, gardens, and orchards. Lord, in your mercy. Where there is affliction in our world, bring healing. Where world leaders are perplexed, bring clarity of vision. Give a spirit of discernment to political advisors and all vocations that inform the work of governments and policymakers. Lord, in your mercy. Provide wholeness and respite to all who are weary those who struggle in any way and those who care for them 
Especially today, we remember Sandy, Jan, John, Brian, and Gail. Lord, in your mercy, stir our hearts toward abundant generosity among our neighbors who experience hunger and food insecurity. Bless feeding ministries and community food efforts, especially community gardens, farmers markets, and food pantries. Open both our hearts and our tables. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the communion of saints whose lives made visible the saving life of Jesus Christ. Guide us by their example to embody the treasure of your love for the sake of the world until we come to our final rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.